same snacks, you know? I need yeah. small quantities of more different snacks, which is why snack I swap. think that when we're a week out, we should really have a, a convergence of all of our snacks. Just snack, snack swaps, right. you know, uh, yes. because Smart. then you're not hoarding it anymore. You're like, it's a week out, like, yeah. I'm going to survive either way. But if I could survive with someone else's snacks, that would be great. <laughs> yep. I'm super so worried. this is a ploy to get other people's snacks. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm, I'm adequate like snacks. I could offer I, I have soda good water. Snacks. <laughs> I just, uh, I, you know, I'm kind of tired of them. Guys, I have sorts. Beans. No. <laughs> no, thank you. Yeah, uh, keep that away. Sorry, you're not <laughs> invited. Keep sorry it to beans. yourself. <laughs> Look. That's all you. <laughs> to all my people out there who like sardines, you know what I mean. No one's going to comment. How's the chat saying, over there? Quiet? <laughs> <laughs> right. No everyone, one says anything. Everyone actually just left. <laughs> <laughs> I know my mom did. <laughs> like she literally just texted me. Sorry, let's be quiet for Shayan. I did say my least favorite, but I didn't see what my favorite soup is. And I think... Yeah, how's it going over there? We are back in position. Yay. Huzzah! Yay. We're going to start moving. Okay. Well, we we got to go back down first. But, but we're still moving. That's, That's great. <laughs> the ship isn't moving anymore. But we're uh, moving. No. Oh my gosh, I just noticed the please be patient student driver sticker. <laughs> yeah. That's great. How do you feel about pickled herring, Sarah? Never had them, but I think that that's classified under like sardines. Start coming down on the winch there, Sarah. All right. Just gonna, we got some layback that's gonna correct, but we start coming down. All right. Ugh. Excuse me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so Cheyenne, we can just head back towards the slope at whatever angle is comfortable. Okay. Do we want to mm -hmm. wait for the, um... To get back on bottom? Yeah, yeah you're yeah. going to have to. Yes. Oh, no? Okay. No, yes, you have yes. to. Oh. And also, we got to wait for Atalanta to swing back. Yeah, that's all good. But if we're if we're still talking snacks, I brought <laughs> I brought hot Cheetos and they were gone in I think four days. Oh man, I don't know why I didn't think to just bring more because I am a Cheetos. snacky person. But I think I just thought that we would literally have a shoebox for storage. Um, That's what they made it sound like. To yeah. be they did. Yeah. They really yeah, did. I mean, there's room, but she also oh, don't want to move down. in. Um. I literally packed, and like I'm staying after yeah. for a, in Hawaii for a bit, and I literally don't have anything. Like I have huh. like these two t-shirts, mm -hmm. two more t-shirts, and like shorts, like nothing nice. Yeah. Yeah. So to buy some Hawaiian dresses then. I to mean, get into the, the Ross that Loopy and I went to in the beginning was pretty stacked. I always go to yeah. Goodwill and I get one sarong, and then you can mm. use that as your towel, Ooh. and you can use it as a skirt, and you can use it as dress. <laughs> and so it's true. It's very versatile. So true. Yeah, that's one thing about this. It's like, I, was trying um, to keep it like 11, I had to pack light, 10, and it's like, mm -hmm. um, literally going well, to no, Rhode Island even after this. Now. So it's like, I really got to take it right? back with just trailing little out. I have. Yeah. For right. like another month. <laughs> oh, you mean the speed? Yeah. So Sorry. on the right side. Uh, yeah, that's um, fine. Well, my family can, can take like care 15. packages of <laughs> more clothes that I need. <laughs> so, yeah. Even twenty, actually, we're actually just gonna wear Nautilus shirts. <laughs> <laughs> no, literally. <laughs> I'm gonna be at a bar and I'll be like, yeah, I have um. Oh, don't do that shirts. though. No, no, I was gonna say. <laughs> I have my utility shorts on. Can uh, you folks in the back just uh, cool Ye it for yes, a minute? Yes, so this is yes. the same as if Got we're it. landing out, right? The last 50 meters kind of thing. Just uh, keep the comms you a bit shattered down a little bit until we're back on the bottom. Sure. Yeah. Nice.
There you go, it's 90, 94 meters. Yep, registering. See some scatter starting to come in your sonar there. Mm -hmm. You can go ahead and put the auto heading on Atlanta, I think. Okay. Which way we want to head back? Uh, 90, but you can just let it hold for now, it's okay until okay. we get down more. Atlanta's about 50 meters. So yeah, you stop up when you either stop got 20 up. on your altitude or 20 on, or say 30 on the sonar, whichever is first. Sonar. That's an interesting one. Well, that's the swimming one, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, got some coming in. Kind of slowing down a little bit now. Love that name. Yeah, what do you got there? Um, 27. 26. Yeah. Right just say hold 20. what you got there, and then right. just mind the swing. Mind the uh, swing. swing. You're gonna probably move around a bit. Kay. So I'll, I'll get in under there and uh, point them out eastward. Okay. Well, you're going to have to respect what the ship is capable of or it's going to lose it again. So I wouldn't necessarily try and get on the, back on the track. I just... Follow its heading, yeah. 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 yeah but you can't... You're not going to be able to get where you were, right? No, that's okay. We don't need to go there, but... Yeah. A very strange smiley face. All right. Um... Yeah, and take up like a 90 degree heading on Atalanta there. Okay. Oh, wow, that's pretty neat. Oh. Wow. Now we got Chrysogorgians. We're back. Big, big Primnoid yeah. fans. 
cool kind of. Would you look at that? Geology. Very cool feature. Well, that's not what I was expecting. Right, <laughs> nope. right back into it. Wow, these are big, Chrysogorgia. Oh my gosh, yeah. They're doing well. Yeah, go ahead. Cool sack of calyx maybe in the back there. Roger. All right. Not as interesting here, it doesn't look like. It's kind of <laughs> right here in the sandy patch. Yep. But we gotta get, get through that. Yep. Who knows? Who knows what we'll see. Yep. Some sea pens. Mm -hmm. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> Mm -hmm. A little yin yang. Wow. So it looks like a lot of primnoids with associates. Mm hmm. Um, big black coral. Crinoid. Another big fly oh, trap. There's a big fan growing on that dead stalk. It's interesting. Mm hmm Oh, yeah, actually. Oh, could we look at this coral real quick? Yeah. Oh, that's different. Another reticorgia. Oh, I love Go how... Go ahead and zoom. I love how pink yeah. everything is here. These are great. It's another Swiftia. Or, wait... Oh. Um. It looks bubblegummy, but the polyp, it's bubblegum. That's yep. Paragorgia. Woohoo, we're yep. good here. That's good, thank you. Roger. Did you get a good shot of that? Yep. Oh, good one. Oh, nice. Deep, deep red, yeah. What's the bridge saying? Um, I, the main reason we lost control is just like the swell, um, and just like super, super gusty winds. Um, so for now we'll just move forward as the direction that we can move, which is good because that's yeah. kind of where we want to go. Sounds good for now. Yeah. Now we're in the desert, <laughs> the desert of the deep sea. Speaking of deserts, Daniel, do you want to talk about how you got here by being in the desert? Oh. <laughs> yep. I just uh, 
just walk down to the ocean from the middle of nowhere to another middle of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Hmm. So I uh, lived for the past few months in southern Utah, which is a big desert out there in the Colorado Plateau. And I worked in a national park called Bryce Canyon. I was a park ranger intern there. Yeah. And so, yeah, I was working in interpretation. Yeah, Chris Gorgia. Go ahead and zoom. C pen. Yep. Thank you. Beautiful. We're good. Roger. I think it's cool that you found a career path where you can still study science, but you're very much outdoors. Being yep. Yeah. Really getting to travel with, uh, with work and with science is really kind of hitting all the, the points there for me. And if you're interested in a career like that, um, yeah, there's definitely a pathway for it in science communication, for example, but also um, geology and ecology, biology as well. So the program I was a part of is called Scientists in Parks, and they currently have applications open till June 11th, and they place uh, st uh, students who study stemming like university in national parks around the country for whatever science goals they need. And say, be a park ranger like I was in Bryce Canyon, or the you can uh, heteropolypus. Tell me to adjust Huntington yeah, yeah. or see going under zero nine zero. We're moving at uh, six zero now, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. You could also be like, say, a shallow coral uh, biologist in Biscayne National Park in Florida, or you could be a mountaineer in Yosemite National Park or Denali in Alaska. So. Oh, wow. Plenty of opportunities open. And that experience can one day, if you so choose, lead you to being aboard the Nautilus. And we have opportunities that are available usually starting in the fall. On our website, we have uh, internships for science and engineering, as well as uh, videography. And for those in the uh, Naval or Coast Guard Academies, there is a navigator position as well. And it's also science communication for formal and informal educators, as well as artists who like to come uh, out to see. Can we look here? Sorry. Something black. Go ahead and zoom. Um, oh, interesting. Oh, yeah. Fish. What's going on here? Oh. Crinoid? Crinoid. Yeah, huh. it's crinoid, but that looked very yeah? strange at first. Oh, oh. oh. looks it's like moving. a beetle. <laughs> I thought it was a bug of some kind. Looks yeah. like it's not doing too hot. No. Uh -huh. right. Have we seen a fully black one like this? No, um, we've seen the like Sathrametra, like the the dark purple ones, but yeah, yeah. this is interesting. It's a really right. dark one. Thank you. So for those of you who are watching live, uh, welcome aboard the Exploration Vessel Nautilus. Oh. If you have any questions, you can go to our website and you can uh, type in a question for us to answer live here on, on the feed. Mm, Ted, you're at it of some kind. Coming up on a sponge. 
Well, that's a big dead sponge mass right there. I'm pretty sure this whole thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you want to zoom um, on it? Uh, that's all Let's right. But if we could look at the colophagus behind it. Yeah, there. This one. Looks like it's branching off of the same. Yeah, that's just a multi-headed colophagus. Go ahead and zoom. Ooh. That's cool. Well, wow. looks mm -hmm. like dandelions. That's lines. big. Yeah. And yeah, we're seeing these last dive, too. Mm-hmm. On our sponge, sponge city dive. <laughs> sponge city. All right. I think we're good here. Thank you. Roger. Oh, oh I think right Did you behind, get that if That's we go to good. the right, there's a something here. Something blue, perhaps that one an a enemy. Purple halter. Yeah, oh yeah. Cucumber. Yep. Yep. We're seeing a lot of the um, that sea star chomping on this mm. bushy bamboo. Oh yeah, that's that purple same. guy. Looks like a orb though. No, Looks it's like just a, a smooshed up halter. Yeah. Go ahead and zoom. Oh yeah, I see the angle. Like Barney purple cucumber. Yeah. <laughs> Very purple. Barney cuke. You know what that reminds me of? Remember What's that remind you of? The old McDonald's characters. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, Grimace. Oh, it's all that shaking. It's like good Grimace here. to me. Thank you. I don't know. The way it looks, yeah, it looks like a fortune ways. cookie. <clears throat> can zoom out. We'll call it Thanos instead. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ooh, that... This like whole canyon there looks very cool. Oh, if only we were smaller. Maybe there will be another. Uh, what was that? Bat batfish? What we saw. Oh, oh, we disturbed it. Oh. Sorry. Wow, this is interesting. Ooh. It's a big canyon right here. That's wow. Awesome. Yeah, yeah that's a really cool oh shot. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, get shots of that. No. Wow, this is incredible. There's so much wow. down here. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that current Oh flow. my gosh, got bathopathies. Uh, my goodness. Primnoids, hemichorallium, unbranched bamboos. The whole gang's here. Yeah, that's great. Crinoid? On a sponge. sponge. My it's goodness. Huge promno fan. Look at that hemichorallium. Like pieces have oh. broken off, but that fan was ginormous. That's crazy. My goodness. Wow. And look at its gold skeleton, too. It's like two meters. So pretty. And then the Ritigorgia on top. Mm-hmm. We can see other stuff in the background, too. Yeah. Do we want to oh stop gosh. the ship and look at it more? Um, I don't know how much more there is to it. I don't think we can get farther down. Yeah, we can't really go more in that direction. Pretty much on the extents yeah, right so now. That's fine. I don't know we'll, as I we'll turn if we're going to be able to. That's okay. We'll just uh, take it in here yeah. while we can. Yeah. Try and come, turn around and come back over it. I guess not a Ritogorgia. That might be that, that pseudo-chrysogorgia. That yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, that's so cool. Man. And this is, you know, a feature obviously you can't see in the multi-beam because no. it's, we don't have that kind of resolution even with our... Right. High resolution multi beam mapping system. So you just never know that this kind of thing is here. No. Nope. Unless you stumble yep. across it. It's a big part of ocean exploration, seeing the finer details down here. Yeah, Very that's pretty. Awesome. Yeah, that's, that's, that's over all here. good. <laughs> the edge of that feature is cool, though. That yeah. whole yeah. wall. It really does look like a canyon. I think this whole wall has like lots of little canyon features coming into right. it. Right. If we had the kind of flexibility to look at that, I'd say we should, but. Really provides a lot of niches. But we don't. Yeah. All right. We good? My images are coming out awful. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, it's hard to just exposure yeah. when we're far away, then you end up having to. But I got some good ones. Could bring the f-stop. Uh, to a lower number there. Okay. For those like landscape shots. Yep.
Wow. That was cool. Mm-hmm. Very unique. Mm-hmm. So for the still cam photos, is it more ideal to overexpose or underexpose when taking under images? Exposed. Under, yep. Underexpose. Yeah. Because overexpose, you blow out a lot of the details. That's all lost. Mm -hmm. But underexposed, you can usually can recover still see them, yeah. Yeah, I know it's like that for um, like digital. I think it's the opposite for film. Yeah. No, you want to under. Underexposed for if film. If you clip it, you can't get. There's not any information. Yep. To, yeah, that makes sense. To recover. Amber, the film expert over here, <laughs> or the videography. Both. Yeah, I started when I first started back in the day. It was all film, so I was a film loader. Oh. There you go. Little, little C pen. Yep. So Amber, I actually just bought a film camera a few months ago while oh. I was out in Utah and like a stills camera or a, or a motion? Stills camera. Okay. And it was uh, something I got for quite a bargain. It's a uh, Minolta XG9 from like the late 70s. And I love it. It's a nice little nifty thing. And I was shooting on some old expired Kodak film with it. I need to get it developed, but I have it on board with me. I can show it to you sometime if you yeah, like. Yeah, I would love that. Cool. Well, it looks like we're coming up on some more. Oh yeah, some here. clusters. Wow. You need to think gosh. next time that we're like, this is a dense enough community, we <laughs> need to take an eDNA sample. Oh my god, you're right. Actually, maybe here. This is, oh. Yeah. This is pretty dense. Oh man, I wish we took one earlier. The, the canyon. This does have the bushy bamboos, right? We just went over them. Uh, yes. Them. There's some paramaricids there. Aridogorgia, chrysogorgids. Yeah. Okay, let's take some. Want to do it? Yeah, let's pop number six. Let's not and if forget we could this time. Pan Number around. six already been. Um, six. Oh, there's already eDNA. Oh, yeah, okay. We have five. One. I'm sorry. Then. So Excuse it'll me. be five. And after this, I'd like to remember to pan around a little and take a, some good pictures of what was here. Mm -hmm. I got a few already, but yeah, we can keep going. So yeah, if you Loopy could mention uh, the bushy bamboos and large primnoid fans. Uh, Aridogorgia. Aridogorgia. Paramarisid, I think I saw. Oh really? Yep. Yeah. I think I saw one. Uh, right which Niskin are we Five. on? Five. Five. Okay. Somebody keep a good eye on that camera up there. I'm watching it. <laughs> Pathy pathies. You getting those bath pathies? Mm -hmm. It yeah, went. It went. Okay, just a quick pan around now at the surroundings, please. Yep. You want me to get up and fly away from it, you mean? Look back on it uh, kind of thing? No, here's good, just so we, like, yeah, if you could just look to the right, look to the left a little, and we'll just take some pictures of what's, what's in front of us.
then a bit to the left. Cool. And spin the vehicle a little if possible. Or if you wanna if you wanna like get up a little bit. Yeah, that's what two. I'm saying. Then you'll get the Yep. You'll see more than this. Scoochin. Does get a bit though harder yeah. higher up to tell what you're looking yeah. at. Yeah. A little bit to the left if you're able. I think is where most of the density was. It's more over to the left, but I'll just come over here and fly sure. through it. Sure. What all was we? Uh, so yeah, we had the bushy bamboos, pa uh, pri a lot of primnoids, <laughs> some chrysoborchids, sponge, a tree pleuro sponge. Is that a yeah? Or sorry, yeah. That's I don't it. know. Is it tree to pleuro? Yep. Learned that one yesterday. Or actually, we. Getting dragged. Come on. Should be under the red uh, ends, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you think sponges know oh, that we call not. them sponges? Probably not. What'd you ask? <laughs> they know? <laughs> do they know that they are called sponges, or do they have their own... They most certainly do not know that they are <laughs> called sponges. <laughs> they have no consciousness. These are great shots. Except for one sponge that lives in a pineapple. Jail. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, lovely. A pineapple okay. jail. <laughs> Yummy. Unless you're allergic to pineapple. You're allergic to pineapples? All right. I am not. Ooh, oh, actually. Okay. All right. That's yeah, it. we're good. Thanks. Quite a few people are actually allergic to pineapple. Well, it does eat your tongue. There's like enzymes in it, I think, that kind of eat away at your tongue. Mm -hmm. It happens to me sometimes, but I still drink or eat pineapple. Oh, yeah. Can't wait for a pina colada. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, um, there's this like dried fruit powder. It's called leaking powder. Uh -huh. That if you put it on pineapple, it's like really, really good. Huh. Really? Ooh. Yeah. What's it called? Leaking powder. Oh, Lee -hing. spell that? Lee Hing? Uh, or actually, if you don't know how to spell it, it's I fine. I don't know how to spell it, but if you, search it, if you put, like, Hawaii in there, it should pop up. Okay. Noted. It's, like, it looks, like, red. It's just, like, mm -hmm. red powder. It's the same. I'm pretty sure it comes from fruit. I think okay. I know what you're talking oh, about. Okay, it's this a one. Sep septral loft. Okay. Yeah. It wasn't under the larger group, I thought. Septral afro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get well, my I get my groups mixed up really easily with sponges. Mm -hmm. and a little polyopagon type sponge. Yeah, on the left there. Mm -hmm. So for the folks. Oh, sorry. What is? Is that a big? That's a big. Older? Another sponge. sponge. Another fernimidid. That is huge. Want to zoom? Looks sure. like a bell. Go ahead. Just got those pretty shiny mm -hmm. threads. Well, actually, and can we look to the left of it after? Yeah. That's, that's just oh, wow. an actinistolid anemone. Oh, yeah. So bite out of it. So you're right. Yeah, we don't have to go left. Okay. We're good. Full wide. I haven't seen those on this dive yet, though. No, I don't think so. So for the folks back at home, what were those bottles that we opened up earlier? What was that for? Um, bottle we closed? EDNA. The EDNA. Oh. Oh, was that on the screen? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um, those are Niskin bottles. They're two and a half liters, I want to say. Um, and when, uh, when Michael pulls the cord, 
It uh, snaps the Niskin bottle shut and preserves kind of this little snapshot here of what the water was like right here. Um, and that stays shut and we'll, as, as we bring it up to the surface, the ROV, it should stay sealed and then we can uh, take a sample of that water. And it's, so we're taking it for eDNA. Um, we're trying to capture whatever is floating around in the water that might have uh, sloughed off of of shed shed off exactly yeah. of the from the different organisms living in this area and, and it's, it's a uh, more it's a less invasive way of doing it too yeah right so the idea is that Fair eventually we i think sorry the idea is that we may be able to sequence uh so we run that all we filter that all through and we trap everything that's in the water in a little filter and then you can sequence what gets trapped on that filter and the idea is that ultimately it may be possible to um, to learn what's in a community without having to actually sample each member of that community. Big hemicrallium. These are pretty, yeah. Hemicrallium, bamboo, and primnoid. Woohoo! Wow. I wish you could oh, emulate wow. this as like a bouquet. Yeah. Imagine that'd having this in like your living oh, room. Oh, be so pretty. That would be uh. really cool. Somebody's got to do that. Someone make that a Never. business. Well, it is. Huh? Like Precious oh. corals are. Okay, make it, it a. Is. Don't, don't. Do 3D printing. <laughs> 3D printing. Make it. Yeah, 3D printing. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean like that. <laughs> 3D print a replica. Don't do that. <laughs> you can make them out of glass. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say yeah. glass. That's true. Like that'd be pretty. <gasps> blown like glass. Like a glass print. Yeah. That would take so much talent. Let's make a coral. I'm sure it is a thing. I'm gonna look that up. Glass too. I love glass shops. They're so cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, someone make a 3D printer <laughs> based 3D <printed>. store. <laughs> Don't we have a 3D uh, printer? Adam. Yeah, Adam would make that. Adam. <laughs> yep. Yep. Fun fact about uh, Polyopagon, Victor uh, Gorgia. Hercules, those uh, multicolor balls you might have saw in one of our uh, camera feeds earlier, those are 3D printed, uh, I believe, with the one on the ship. Mm -hmm. So we do have a 3D printer on board. Dan's got it working constantly. <laughs> yes. <Yep. laughs> Making new boxes for drawers and all kinds of stuff. That's a big Chrysogorgia geniculata. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, glass coral decoration, it's a, it is a thing. Oh, oh another sponge, <gasps> dead sponge mass. Oh, wow, that is ginormous. So what do we think that is? Polyopagon that kind of just yeah. collapsed? Yeah, just withered away. Nothing but a spicule mess. <laughs> oh, those are beautiful. This is interesting. I'm just realizing it's 3.30. I know, we're getting close. Yeah. Man. This looks like a tree more than it does a coral. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I guess they've got some more body plants. Another head, uh, another one of those sea cucumbers. Oh, the big ones? Sm uh, the purple with the oh, darker purple. I forget the name. Starts with an H. Hendrix. I don't Hen think it's Hanson up there, is it? Uh, yeah. Uh, the dark one, too? With the, so the, no, like lighter with oh, the darker. Oh, end. yeah, that's yeah. Hanson up there, yeah. Um,. Have we noticed any volcanic features in the shallow depths? Uh, yeah. Many of these guys have post erosional volcanic cones during the surface. Um, we've only seen there have been like some kind of lower down, there's some pillowy ish flows. We collected some rocks, tried to get some rocks that looked like they had broken off from around there. It was difficult to find anything unaltered or that looked unaltered from the outside, but uh, yeah, I think volcanic feature-wise, that's the most we've been seeing.
It would be cool if we could get like a 3D model of Hercules and then make like a 3D printed file for that. People that would have be their own cool. Little perks at home. I'm, there is a model. I think, yeah, I was going to say, I think that yeah. exists already. It just yeah. needs to be, uh, you know, simplified for the printer. Maybe somebody can give that a shot one day. I'm seeing so many of these um, slime stars. Oh my gosh, they're eating everything. <laughs> I don't think that's those are slime stars. Those are goni steroids. Oh. Goni steroids. I don't know which these one. These. Yes. or that other one you found. Yeah, right. They look really similar. But they are eating away. Just going. Yeah, they look hilarious. I know. <laughs> There's actually, well, yeah, I have a funny picture. Hmm. Yeah, seeing a lot of these um, bamboo corals. They're huge. Doing really well. Very wispy. They look like bushes. Yeah. Many associates on them. So we have somebody who typed in who's uh, looks like he's currently in the Navy. And he's currently curious about uh, any potential employment being aboard Nautilus, curious about who maintains the ships, computer networks, comms equipment, and who drives our vessels, and etc. Mm. Well, I don't know if anyone here has any specific information, but I know they're always looking for crew members. You can go on our website, and on our About tab, what you can go about? to Employment Opportunities. And if you are looking for anything specific or you'd like to ask questions, you can contact careers at oet.org with any questions. Once again, that's careers at oet.org. Yeah, I'm really surprised by how little diversity we're seeing. I mean, okay, that's relative, but like, generally we're seeing primnoids, hersegorgids, couple sponges, black. Sponge-wise, I, mean, I guess we've seen polyopagon, hylanema mostly, yeah. and uh, bamboos, we've seen the well, some of the I-4 mm -hmm. and some of the D-1. And then, uh, well, could we look at this little yellow right there, please? Yep. And we've seen the primroses, which I'm so bad at IDing to I lower than that. Cool. They are, yeah, they're tough. But generally the same, uh, same, same genus, I Go think. Go ahead and zoom. Yep. Or same few. Paramarsid, yeah. Cool. Thank you. Um, Good to zoom out. And Kay. what else? Yeah, like the that Chrysogorgia was interesting. We've seen like a couple yeah. Aridogorgia, oh, but that yeah. maybe pseudo Chrysogorgia, yeah. and we've seen Hemicralium too. Mm -hmm. There's Hemicralium again. Yeah. Really interesting to see the difference in already clear now. Dominant species. Headless crinoid. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that was just that massacre was so interesting. Oh yeah, I wasn't around for that. Oh. Was it just a bunch right. of headless crinoids? Yes. 
very strange. It was like, and it, it would all be, at once got too heavy. Not even no, but the thing is, is that it, there would be like a whole like you know sea lily meadow of them, and yeah. there would be only like it wouldn't it didn't have like a pattern. Okay. It was very like dispersed. Uh huh. Um, that's why I was like, what is happening here? We did see that one. We did see a batfish. That was fun. That was cool. We saw that snail. Snail take a tumble. And, w and we've been seeing a decreasing amount of sea cucumbers, but still a lot. Mm -hmm. And we saw some really chubby variants. Well, you got to remember that we also like went down and then went back up. So true. True. We haven't been going straight up. Right. Um, I think that's actually a heteropolypus. Mm -hmm. A lot of the colophagus, too. We didn't mention that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How strong is the current feeling here, Mike? Mm, very minor. Minor? Okay. Mm -hmm. There was a point a little bit where the, the little that little crevasse uh -huh. little bit was. There was uh -huh. something going through there, but generally it's not a ton. Okay. Mm. Something fluid dynamics. Interesting. Again, like why? <laughs> why, why so much? It's good. Lots of good rocky substrate. As I was say, this but is a still, cool area. You know, we've been over other rocky substrate with more current and nothing yeah. right right what's different we'll be i bet they're gonna see cool stuff as they get even shallower <laughs> later on yeah. the dive. i mean this is I great hope. i'm not complaining oh yeah no of course i'm very curious that was my first time seeing a batfish mm, yeah swimming so like that too yeah me too yeah one like Space on our so watch sweet. yeah but yeah, it would be interesting to understand the constraints of what's going on here. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're here for, to yeah. learn more, to get people interested in researching it more. So I know on this uh, watch, it's been a little deficient from jokes as we usually are. I was so about to say, where are they? So I got one for you. <laughs> okay, let's hear it. S so... A man walks into a library and says, I want to learn more about corals. The librarian tells him, you'll find them under C. And the man says, I already know where they live, sir. I just want to learn more. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. they live well under done. the sea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some big red gorgia here. Yeah, you want to zoom? Sure. For fun. Go ahead. <laughs> Some pretty shots. Yeah. Oh, there's one of those little jellies again, I think. Oh, oh a couple of them. Can we zoom on the jellies if there's any more? Where's the jellies? Uh, uh, the little red dots. Yes. There's oh, up there. top okay. or, or down. I wonder if these are the ones that we see floating past us. Oh, wait. Do they have... They uh, have could little... We, uh, are these... Are we in a position to try and sample that, sample. possibly? These Should look like... Stop the ship? Yeah, just stop the ship yeah. and... Uh, I don't know. Full wide. Yeah. Let's see. You want? They There's tried to slurp the them last time. We didn't recover them, but uh, the slurps right. were also not aligned then. Yeah. You want the little jellies? Yes. yes. Off the a branch with a jelly, I think. Yeah. Okay. Um, can you get the slurp camera up there and get it rotated around? And I don't know which one it is that has the fine mesh in it. Uh, do you know which which oh, slurp jars? Oh, that's a jars? science job. I don't know. <laughs> well, I don't put it on. Um, you guys are supposed to have that on your diagrams. 
it's like number seven, I but think it has it's seven. nine or whatever. Right? I want to say that he that Dan put it in six and seven. One and two have the fine mesh. There you go. One so and two. Dan's voice. here. Dan. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Dan. Uh, all right, let's what kind go of coral for one is this or two then. Two? One or two. That? What kind of coral are we getting? Sarah, something? can you get the jar up there and Magnus yes. rotate that stuff around? I'm not gonna lie, it looked like it had the right. the arms. Mm -hmm. But I'm not gonna get my hopes up. Oh, it's not one of those, but it does it. does have that like mm -hmm. the w the one we oh saw earlier no, today. Oh I forgot the porch. Darn it! Hold on, see if I can get away with this. Oh yeah. Yeah. Plenty of space. Come on. Come on. Plenty. All right. All right. Which way are we going? Let's go forward. So uh, go back on the flush chair. Yeah, and then run the pump. Okay. That looks good. So then you go pump on, like, try 50% to start. Okay. 50. Well, yeah, okay, there you go. Else? See? Let that go for a second. Okay. Um, and sorry, which, do we have anything in flush jars or in the soap jars yet? Um, in one we do. Okay, so we're going to yeah, have to go for two. One we do. Okay. So shut it down and go to yeah, two? Yeah, shut it off and rotate it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, look at this new slurp contraption. <laughs> ah, that's right. We're going to go in reverses today. Oh. Is that off? Keep going, keep going. She's stuck. Let's go back. Reverse. There we go. And you guys said number two? Yep. All right. Number two. Thank All right. you. And suction. Hold on a sec. Zoom in yeah. on the Zeus. Yeah. Okay. Try 50. Looked reasonable. Try. F is that jar lined up right? Looks a little off. Go. Come back. Let's go this way. Oh, no. That's right. Sorry. Yeah, right that, there. okay. Okay. All right. And then suction on, 50%. Yeah, 50. If you can get any branch this way, too, that's welcome. If not, oh, that's okay. Some. All right. Let's move oh. around in there. Oh, man. Yes, take it. Get out in there. Oh. oh. Come on, join us. Yes. Oh, that's nice. Two. Now, yeah. got to wait. Keep it on till they yep. ideally go in the jar. Please Join us, friends. <laughs> <laughs> the slurp. I hope Full they're on the there this time. They're so small. Where'd they so go? Teeny. More, 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 more juice on the pump. <laughs> more juice. Sorry, going up to sixty. <laughs> oh, oh, we got one. Oh, we got one. one. Did they go? One. one. We saw one. So There's at least one. All right. Maybe we just didn't see the other one. Yeah, it's possible. Let's. I'll do this, but let's just assume it's in there. Okay. All right. So then turn the pump off and rotate it back to the flush jar. All right. Great job, Slurp. Yay. Oh, look at there it is. Oh. Yay. Okay. Reverse. Back to flush. Go on, keep going. Oh my God, so it's cute. We're gonna have to go forward. These kind of look oh, like the ones that we've been back. seeing off and on. Yeah, it's the one we tried to collect in the there past. Yeah, I mean, like flush. in the, is there we water column. Would it be, uh, could we potentially try and get, there was one more uh, further up the colony. Uh, we're, Are we, is you want to move moving? the ship back? No, it's all right. If that's what we got, we, that's what we got. We can go for it. I didn't see it there. Just zoom in on the Zeus. It, it's, uh, there was one closer the to the front. It's, uh, uh, if you go right uh, top of the frame right now. I can't. I think there? that's a shrimp behind oh, it, but sorry. there is certainly one in the front somewhere. Oh, yeah. I think it's there. Oh, oh yeah. Right oh, there but it, that's kind of too hard to get to. Yeah. Okay. But we got one. Got at one. Least. That's good. I knocked this thing off. Damn it. Oh, 
Excellent, excellent. It's this one there, you see how that's spelled? What the fuck is going on here? Hey, Michael. <laughs> Rating zero. <laughs> <laughs> wonder if you're getting dragged, maybe. Our shift change will start to be underway in the next 10 or so minutes. So if we're quiet, that's why. And so the next four to eight watch, uh, Katie will be your SPL host. Coming down.
Video sound check. We got you. At least we get the big wall. No. No, I had trouble prying myself out of bed this morning. Me and you both, I slept through all of my alarms and I woke up and I was like, it is 3.45, I've got to get my butt moving. But I did take time to brush my teeth, so we're good. It's okay, you're sitting next to Coralie, it's okay. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So before we get started here this morning, um, there's been some um, observations from the front row that the back row does not have their head in the game. Um, I just witnessed it there with uh, Michael, and it's been going on on this shift too, so... We don't mind the chit-chat and stuff, but I would like to try and keep it a little more professional and on topic and um, just kind of tone down the bandwidth a little bit. I've had the back row basically turned off the last two nights because um, I just don't have the bandwidth to go off on topics that don't have anything to do with the dive. Copy. End of rant. Onward and upward. Onward and upward, Roger. First house or it's in in a while. Can we zoom whip, please? Right here. To grab my circles. Uh, go ahead, Joe. Get a little bit tighter. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Here go full zoom in. Got it. 
All right, thanks. Okay, go away, please. So many options. Uh, put down, big down and left. Right. Please. I'm really excited that last watch got a couple of the coral livers jellies we've been trying to capture. Oh really? I am quite happy we've been able to do that and across like four different expeditions now we've been trying to catch those. Okay, Dale, push it in there for me. What type of coral is it on? An Aritagorgia. There seems to be some level of fidelity that those as at least their favorite prey. So a nice little bamboo coral here with a little retractor in me and, and either an amphipod or a worm down at the bottom. It's too small to tell. Oh, and a little mice shrimp there up in the top. All right, thank you. Okay, go in, please. Well, good morning, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Ford 8 Watch. I'm your watch lead, Brian Kennedy. I'm a deep sea um, benthic ecologist. Um, and I am your watch lead for the next few hours. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Corley Rodriguez. I'm a graduate student at the University of Rhode Island's Graduate School of Oceanography. Um, I study deep sea rocks. I am the scientist. Hello, Katie Doyle, Science Communication Fellow. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Chris Ryan. I am the data logger for this shift. If I can push it a little closer here. Okay, zoom in video. Uh, that cor Coralivorous jelly was on a Aridogorgia. Yep. Um, uh, push in a little more. And uh, try some focus action there. It's not quite. Yeah, it's better. Hmm. The age-old question: Hemicorallium or Paragorgia? This, when they're young like this, it's really hard to tell them apart. Um, let's go with Hemicorallium for the moment. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Okay, Daryl, you can go wide, please. Front row, you know, position, introduce yourselves. Yeah, I'm uh, Dan sitting in the Herc chair tonight. I'm Lynette, I'm the navigator. I'm Ren, I'm uh, piloting Atlanta. Hello, I'm Daryl Talak, I'm the video engineer intern. I'm currently an MTSC student going for live video production. Thank you. All right, so this that's a good, that was perfect with the thruster wash because all the other corals except the big pink one moved. So <laughs> I am sure that is a Christ, uh, hemocrallium. So we've got a couple Christ, or an interritogorgia, a chrysogorgia, two chrysogorgias, um, and a hemocrallium there. Which since that's a hemocrallium, it makes me um, reconsider my last call on paragorgia. Um, So the thrusters were, because it didn't move, you were able to tell what it was? Yep. So the hemicoralliums have very hard skeletons, um, as opposed to the paragorgids, which have a much more proteinaceous skeleton, that bendy. So the definitive way to tell them apart is generally to poke them with a manipulator arm. Mm -hmm. um, but that's time consuming. Um, can we, we, have, we have some time here. The ship's doing some housekeeping. Okay. Uh, then can we look for associates on the top chrysogorgia? Sure. Oh. This one up here, see who's home. Uh, let me come around here and some more. 
pink stuff to my left. Yeah, she's just gonna have to reset. <sighs> Alright. Keep a weather eye out, steady as she goes. DSC up here anyway. You put the DSC up in front of you there, of course. He's getting nice pictures. Okay, uh, I can zoom in tight on the one blowing in the breeze there. You can go full zoom there. Looks like I'm looking for little guys on there. Only one squat lobster. Which I'm a little surprised by in a coral this size. So this look, little dude is in um, in the family uh, Chrysostylidae. Uh, it's a Europe, genus Europtychus. All right, I think we got what we were going to get on on that one. Can we pan up and down the coral and see what uh, see if anyone else is home? Sure. too fast on nope. the pan there. No, it's fine. Just looking for color changes basically. And anybody can you got one more tilt down, anyone at the base? Yep. Uh, that's surprisingly light on the uh, associate front on a coral that size to just have the one Europtychus. Alright. We're good with this one. Okay uh, Dale, you can go in. Anything else you want to see here? The Not on this particular well. rock, but on the far side of this rock, that bam, those two corals kind of, that that's dying looking one over there in the corner. I'd like to see what it is. I if you got the leash to get over there. I think so, yeah. That Atlantis headed that way. Give the bridge a shout. Let them know. Is it not? Is it uh, hit the alarm level yet? It should go red if it's. Um, what was the depth of our last rock collection? I do not know. I'm sorry. I was asking Chris. I was looking at a log. So this is the skeleton of a bamboo coral. There's a few 
sections of live polyps left, but just a very few up on the tips, and it has been got all kinds of other life living on it. We've got brittle stars, we've got feather stars, we've got anemones, we've got some hydroids. This is a great example of why we often refer to these as ecosystem engineers. Because they provide habitat, um, super important habitat for a whole bunch of other species um, that can climb up these things, both dead and alive, and get further up into the water column. Could we pick up a rock here? Well, yep. when, I was I'm trying to figure out how long ago it was. Kevin, I don't know how long you've been watching, but we've got four rocks on board already, from, and we haven't even gotten to the, like, the head wall scarp yet on this feature, so I don't know if we want to use another box quite yet. Um, and, and so I'm just trying to figure out is how far it's been. It was 1780 meters was the last 1780 one. meters and we're currently at 16. So we ha we've we just gone about 110 meters of um, water depth. Is there something specific about this spot, Kevin? Or? We can go on to, uh, we can start moving on to the next coral on this feature, if you don't mind, if we can take a look at this one while we're waiting for Atalanta to catch up. All right, here. Atalantis uh, looks like it swung in behind the ship bar right there. Okay, Kevin, that sounds good. Yeah, we'll, we will definitely look for um, some carbonates. Um, um, when we get into the headwall scarp, certainly. Um, but I know we've gotten at least one carbonate from last evening when we first made bottom contact. Interestingly, it was at 2,500 meters. We thought we were going after a piece of uh, um, basalt of some type, and it, it shattered on us. And it was Corley and I were having trouble identifying it from just the video. But it was, you know, it broke easy enough that it clearly wasn't like unaltered basalt. Did Adam, did you talk to Adam about that? Did you get an opinion on him from that rock sample that we I did picked it. up at the beginning? I forgot to ask him too. I did, yeah. Come down five meters, will you? Yeah, yeah. Flying zoom here, Brian. I'm above the other. Yeah, that's fine. You know, Go ahead. I'm yeah. just more or less trying to figure out if this one's still alive or if it's just a skeleton. So this is another hemicralium um, that also isn't doing so hot, but uh, it has a lot of associates. And has a lot of associates. Compared to that other coral that had none. Yep. And it's, there's a little anthemastus mushroom coral there on the bottom right as well. All right, that's all I needed. Thank you. That's it. Copy. Um. So I slide to the left here. Can we get a just a snap zoom on that area? Sure. Yep, yep, uh, we we'll try twenty east. Mm. 
Yes, please. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, so this is a leftover sponge attachment point where the sponge has died off, but the um, spicules that attach it to the seafloor remain. We were seeing the sponges that were made, that were resulting in, or were creating this uh, a couple dives ago. Um, but it looks like here it's died off but left their attachment points. Great, that's all I needed to convert. Thanks. Right. And that looks like uh, the same type of sponge we were seeing creating those type of things. Is that a polyagonid? Yep. We've got four little small Chrysogorgias, a couple big hemicoralliums here, some kind of whip over there on the left. But we're, we're waiting for a little tether, so we can't take a lot of close looks here which is totally fine. This, this area overview is really good to, to get a sense of the density um, and, uh, and diversity of what we've got along this little um, top of this little scarp. What waypoint are we at? We are approaching, yeah, we're south of three, approaching four. Okay. And uh, MBPROC1 has the flater mouse scene up if you want to play with it. Zoom in there, Terrell, while we're waiting for some leash. I'll just, I'll just zoom here. So we've got another big bamboo here um, on the top, making a home for a whole bunch of other things as it enters its last days on Earth, maybe last years. And then probably a primnoan hanging button. out here on the bottom that also has a copious uh, number of uh, ophioroids. Quite have enough leash to come around there. Just trying to get the black background shot. But might be blurry. Twenty, I think, when it Atlantis has it moved.
Actually, Dan, can we look at the the hemichorium that just went off top right? I just noticed something about it that looked different. Yeah. I missed it the first time we were over here. Yeah, the gold part is what I want to look at. All right, I missed it as well. A uh, yep, I think that was a cuskiel that just swam off bottom left. So this looks like some kind of parasitic, yeah, excuse me, parasitic zoanthid um, infection here in the center of it, in the center of this hemichorallium. The purple? Uh, no, the purple is an anemone. The okay. gold. Oh, okay. Stable for the moment. Pushing a bit there for us down. <coughs> Pushing a bit more, maybe. When it has a heavy load of brittle stars on it like that, does that negatively affect the coral? We don't really know. Um, as a general rule, we think that the brittle stars are don't don't have a negative and may have a positive effect. But we definitely have seen areas where the brittle stars have rubbed the tissue off too. So it's probably some there's probably a range within the brittle stars, uh, and certain corals behave differently. But as a general rule, we classify them as commensals or even mutualists. These zoanthids, however, um, they may be invading. Um, this yeah. coral. Because I was going to say, it looks like it should, the top of this coral should be more flush with the rest of it, but it looks like it's very low down. Does that make sense? Yep. So it is, uh, it's definitely possible that these are invaders and they probably require some bare coral skeleton to get, uh, to get a foothold. And then once they have a foothold, um, certainly some of them, Kulamulamana, Kula, Kula, Kula Monomana, uh, Hawaiian gold coral, um, definitely is an invader. It absolutely, once it lands, it, you know, as far as we know, it always takes over the entire colony eventually. Um, I don't remember what this particular zoanth that's called, um, but this one, this group is, um, we're less sure on how invasive it is versus how much it just takes over tissue, areas that are already dead and then stays there. Um, versus actively killing off the host coral. Uh, can we take a close look at one of the brittle stars up on the top of the coral? Yep, so these are the spiny-armed ophiocamphid um, ophioroid group. And then there's a, a feather star, uh, chromatulate crinoid sitting on the back. You can just kind of see the underside of its arms on the other base of the coral. All right, I think we're good here. Thanks. Roger. Okay, Daryl, you can go in, please.
just going to slide along the face here while the ship is static before we zoom off. So are these layered sheet flows, or what's the geology here? Um, it's kind of hard to see this close up, but that's definitely a possibility. I'm trying to look in, at Atlanta view to get a better sense of the overall. So we're moving up um, this side of this uh, large geo has a what looks like a slump feature, like a kind of a, I won't call it a landslide because it hasn't rolled all the way down, but it looks like a slope failure where the top of it's kind of slumping down. And we're just kind of approaching, uh, we moved off the flank of the thing and now we're on a little bit, doesn't look flat right where we're looking right now, but we're moving into a little bit of a lower slope area that is like the top of the slump feature and then We'll be transitioning over to the base of uh, what's called a headwall scarp, which is the exposed ground now um, that is being exposed by the, the falling rock, um, the very slowly slumping rock in this case, probably. Mm, beautiful bamboo coral here. I've never seen it do that before. Yeah, that that's cool. That's a really pretty one. Can we take a... Uh, kind of a quick zoom on its um, central stalk. I do. Go ahead there. So, not a bamboo coral, actually a primnoid. Oh. Um, so, that's a little norella down at the bottom left. And you can, you can tilt up and take a look. So, this is um, probably a paracliptophora. Um, type of primnoid. They have a very similar overall growth pattern um, as some of the candelabra style um, bamboos, but there's no nodes here and looking a little bit closer at the polyps, uh, they have much more prominent sclerites. Um, making that up, so that's two different types of primnoids right next to each other. And then in the background, we've got another hemichorallium Chrysogorgia. All right, thanks. That's good for that one. All right, there. You can uh, go wide there. Yeah, that's really cool. That thing's huge. I don't remember ever seeing one that wide before, like that. So we don't have a really good sense of age on primnoids, um, but that coral is m likely many hundreds, if not thousands of years old to get to that size, and is still quite healthy. I didn't see any patches of dead tissue or anything on it. Um, so it very much is probably still growing. But no associates. Yeah, no associates or there might have been, I saw one little discoloration um, that might have been something, but nothing obvious. Well, that appears to be the current moving the vehicle from okay. right to right. Once you're heading, you're heading more or less south, so the current's moving east to west here. Yeah.
You're good? Yep. Let's continue on if you got some leash. Yeah, I'll keep sliding along the little feature here. Big bathopathies down there in the bottom. A couple more hemicoralliums, a couple more primnoids, nice aridogorgio, getting into really kind of a high density, medium abundance community here. As, oh, I guess we've been in it for a few minutes now, but along the top of this little small uh, couple meter wall. Chris, can you look up the time they fired the last eDNA sample? I want to look up the uh, black coral down here. Uh, sure, we can take a quick look. Is that bathopathies? Yep, that's bathopathies. That it's one's a... Uh, 1523. 1523, so right at an hour ago. Okay. These bathopathies are one of the easier corals to identify. Um, down here, honestly, there's not much that looks like them. Looks like some sea pens from a distance have a similar growth morphology. But, don't get, but then the rest of the black corals are really hard for me. Some in there, though. So these are pretty, um, as corals go, they're um, distant cousins of the octocorals. You look at this is a hexacoral. Um, and most of the corals we look down look at down here are octocorals. All right, that's good enough. Thanks. Okay, go ahead. Thanks. Brian, we have a question online. How do you determine the age of a coral? Um, generally, you uh, do some um, like radioisotope dating of its skeleton. So you need a, a coral that lays down continuous skeleton. Um, that you can harvest. So you have to get the base uh, of a very old coral and then look at the center of that base and you can do uh, radio, radioisotope decay rates and figure out when um, that skeleton was laid down. So the oldest coral um, ever recorded as, or documented is about 4,400 years old and it was... 4,000? Yep, 4,000 and it was found in the uh, Hawaiian Island chain. Thank you. I think that's just as old as the oldest tree, but there's probably older corals than that, right? Yeah, I mean, I'd, uh, I doubt they found the one oldest coral ever um, out there. I believe so, yes. That's, that's the catch on that one, is you absolutely can still do the, the process on, um, on skeleton, but you don't know how long it's been dead. More of the same we've been seeing here. Lots of hemicoralliums, a few primnoids, a couple dead sock sponge, uh, some of these um, bushy chrysogorgias. And you can see as we move through the, the, the diversity and the, in um, terms of um, associates 
and how some types of associates are found much more often on uh, one family of coral and not another. So these um, chrysostylid squat lobsters you can see hanging out here on the chrysogorgia are almost always on chrysogorgia. These ophiocamphid ophiroids are normally on primnoids as opposed to the um, astroschema. Um, some brittle stars that are found more often on the paragorgias and the victorgorgias. Um, it's quite an interesting array of, of variation and we really don't understand the pairing of um, these organisms real well yet. We notice the pattern, but we don't know exactly how, um, how specific it is, whether it's really if it's species specific or family specific. Um, there's still a lot to be know learned about um, the association that get formed between these corals and the things living on them. Can we look at these, one of these spindly um, things more closely? That sure. one or that one? Go ahead, Tao. So this is a nodal branching bamboo. Um, and again, the bamboos are often have large sections of dead tissue or dead skeleton on them. I'm not quite sure why that is, but it's something that is a, a relatively good hint on what you're looking at if it's if it's still living with large bare skeleton patches. Often it, is, it ends up being a bamboo. All right, science is happy. Thank you. Hi there. Okay, go away. Thanks. And there's a, a hemichorallium growing underneath the rock, which is something that continuously confuses me. To understand the, why they like to grow under rocks. They like to hang out. But up bump ch <laughs> Dan will be here all week, ladies and gentlemen. All month. see how that the brittle stars here are using uh, this primnoid as a as a ladder and getting as high as they possibly can up into the current flow Sorry, I'll come up just a bit for you there really look down uh, push in just a bit there while we're floating up for the DOC so we think these brittle stars are actually um, catching things out of the water uh, as well. So they're just really using the current, uh, excuse me, the coral as uh, an access path into the current. So they also, while we don't think they're damaging the coral, they could be competing with the coral for food. Um, but that's also something we really still don't fully understand. Um, Push in a bit more there. Just a bit more. Good, thanks. All right, we're good with this one, but if we can just kind of, before we leave the, the spindly chrysogorgia top right, just out of frame, if we can just take a quick pan, uh, tilt up as we exit. All right. This guy here. Yep, that real spindly, hard to see one. Push in a bit again. I'll drift it back, sorry. 
So that's a little unusual. I don't see an associate here. Um, the Chrysogorgias almost always have uh, a Chrysostyle and Squat Lobster in them, which appears to be missing in this one. So these are also known as gold corals. Their um, skeletons have a nice lustrous gold um, sheen to them if once the tissue is removed. But unlike the bamboos, these are very rarely seen with large sections of dead tissue. And they have uh, very, very, I think of them as dainty polyps with light tissue in between the different polyps. All right, thanks, Pilot. We got what we need on that one. OK, go away, thanks. Um, how about yellow thing there, please? All right. I haven't seen one of these yet. We're good for another 20 a minute. Please. You can uh, chase me. Or taste. Not sure what this is yet. You can push in a bit more if you want. Hmm. Let's call it a paramercia day for now with a question mark. I think we're good, thanks. Right. Mm -hmm. It's one of those examples where color, I think, might be leading us away. wrong. The paramaricias and the plexorids generally have that kind of yellowish color. Um, but that fleshiness of that looks harder to... Uh, the polyp structure was questionable for me on that one, so I'm going to go with the color because the color is pretty consistent across those groups. But I'll go find a second opinion. Here's yeah, another remnants of a sponge here that's uh, died off or fallen off but left its uh, attachment spicules behind. for a minute and get the DSC and uh, slot two, pip eight. We have another little black coral, big Chrysogorgia up here. Come a couple more primnoids, just sliding into view. I think it's probably PC3 or two or three, something like that. Yeah, it's uh, uh, eight. This guy here. Oops, sorry. Pip, uh, it'll be pip eight. Coralie, would you mind describing uh, what you're doing with the still cam? Yeah, so I am just taking some higher resolution pictures than the vid caps that we get. Um, on Herc, 
I mean, the still cam is also on Herc, but uh, the view that you're seeing, um, it's kind of fun because I get to play around with all of, it's like a computer, so I get to play around with the computer that controls the camera. Um, it's also kind of cool because I get to see a different angle than Herc's view. Uh, so sometimes I can see things before, underneath, um, like these little ledges that you see here, too. How are those pictures coming out now, if you looked at any? Honestly, really, five? really nice. I don't know if you, yeah. I haven't looked at any, but you're doing a fantastic job back there. Thank you. Yeah. Would you look at the last Niskin sample sheet and see, did they record the corals that were associated with with it? Um, yep. We have bamboo corals, batapathies, crestogorgia, pernodes. Okay. Everyone. This looks like the same community then. I'll wait a little bit longer. Go probably good for another 20. What kind of sponge is that? That is potentially um, sure. potentially is the same um, polyopagon that we've been seeing, or something similar. I think they've renamed that taxonomy, but I haven't updated my brain um, to the new name. Look at the size of the base on that skeleton that's fallen over next to it, though. Uh -huh. That took, like, a section of rock with it. Oh, yeah. Oh, come on. I'm sorry. It might be hard to see, but Pharaoh Manganese crust is very, like, brittle, and it breaks apart really easily, so... Yeah, it's really surprising when we... I'm, I'm, Every time I grab one of these rocks to unload the RV, I'm shocked at how fragile it is. Yeah. And how my hands Come turn black. Oh, my gloves turn black um, from handling it. It really is.